What's going on, everybody? It is Mike here, and I'm in the PPC den, ready to talk all things Amazon advertising with my co-host, Stephen. How are you doing today? Hey, how's it going, everybody? You know, today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things, one of the things that I think helps separate the average Amazon advertiser and the above average Amazon advertiser, and that is Excel reports that you can get from the Amazon advertising report section. So we're going to be talking about the six kinds of sponsored products reports that you can get from the back end of your advertising reports. And we're going to talk about some of the strategies on how to get the most value out of it. And I'm pretty stoked. You know, it's a beautiful sunny day outside here in Austin, but I, I am actually inside with Steven and we're about to go deep into Excel files. That's right. And uh, just to kind of give you guys a heads up of um, kind of just what we're going to be talking about, the six different reports. Um, we're going to be talking about search term reports, which I'm sure you guys are very well familiar with. Um, but the other five, maybe you didn't know about or uh, you just don't know how to use them. So we'll be talking about targeting reports, advertised products reports, placement reports, purchase products, and performance over time. We're going to talk about, you know, what's the best strategy to use all of these, um, what's actually in them. And we'll even tell you some of the weaknesses about them just so you can know what to be looking out for. Right. And this is going to be sort of fairly more intermediate, really talking about how to take something and, and using it. So we're assuming that you have some Excel skills already. But, uh, you know, Stephen, there might be some people out there listening that maybe they're not that comfortable with Excel. Do you have any words of inspiration for them to really, you know, get ready, put the armor on, get grab their sword, grab their shield, and get ready to go into the lion's den of Excel spreadsheets? Yeah, you know, just like anything, uh, you get better with practice. So uh, I know Excel can be kind of intimidating. I remember the first time when I first got into PPC, um, I was actually going through an interview and they uh, they gave me an Excel sheet that I think had like four or 5,000 rows. Mm -hmm. And I had never seen so many rows before. So it's definitely intimidating, but now I'm like, um, I'm regularly working with, you know, um, 15 to 20,000 rows and mm-hmm. manipulating data and, and making changes. So you, you've gone from, oh my gosh, there's 4,000 rows to psh, only 4,000 rows. Practice makes perfect. And uh, I think one of the coolest sort of things to know about Excel is that literally, if you're ever doing something and you're like, man, this is really hard or this is really cumbersome or this is taking too long, I promise you there is a faster way to do whatever you're trying to accomplish. So whether you're trying to, you know, if you download a report and it lists every single ASIN click and you're, you're trying to figure out, you're trying to combine all your ASIN information, there's a way to do that super duper fast. If you wanted to see your entire account's performance on product pages, rest of search, top of search, there's a very fast way to do that really quick no single thing I think on Excel should take more than 30 seconds. So yeah. There's uh, always a faster way. I actually had a roommate who, uh, his, uh, his company paid, um, for anybody who wanted to, to go take like a six week intensive Excel course at a college in Georgia. And, uh, he learned a ton from that. I didn't get that privilege, but honestly, like whatever you, you wish you could do with Excel, just Google it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably learn a new Excel like tip or trick every day. Cause <laughs> I just like, I'm just like, there's got to be a way to do this. And I Google it and I find it. So, yes. um, you know, good luck to you guys out there. I also want to get philosophical too. You know, all the greats, uh, you know, the great Greek philosophers, all of them, they're seeking answers. They're looking out over these great vistas, looking for the answers of life. Honestly, I think the answers are all in a spreadsheet. Uh, I even used a spreadsheet to determine where to move to. Uh, and Austin came out on top. And I put all the cities that I was interested in moving to, all of the qualitative metrics about those cities, like dog friendliness and cost of living and just general weather and all these different things. And then I quantified them using a spreadsheet. It was wonderful. There was a a pie chart at the end of it. Wow. Just be careful, Michael. You might have made some enemies for yourself. Everybody who's a you know, uh, who loves philosophy, you basically just told them <laughs> Excel trumps philosophy. The, the answer somewhere in a spreadsheet. So enough Excel talk. Let's actually jump in to these reports. The, you know, right off the bat, just in case you've never used these, they're right in the top tab, the reports and then advertising reports. Boom. Once you are there, you are greeted with sort of like a report builder where essentially the way that it works, Amazon asks you, what report would you like to build? What time frame would you like to view it on? And then what unit you'd like to view it on as well? So 
I'll just do a quick overview here. Basically, the report period, the timing, is essentially what time frame you want to run your report on. So you can run it on yesterday or last week or last month or this month. However, things that you cannot do, run any report that we're about to mention that has data over 60 days old. That's right. Amazon will only store your information for up to the last 60 days, um, whether that's a search term report, advertised product report. Um, so if you want any information, you know, if you're trying to look at, you know, Q4 of last year mm -hmm. and it's, you know, past the 60 day period. Which is pretty normal. You know, I might right. want to look at my December sales from last right. year. Or you want to see, you know, what were the most important searches during the holidays mm -hmm. that you really want to make sure you target with your sponsored brand ads or whatever. Uh, nope, can't do that. So the, like literally when you go to the date selector, it's just not listed. So the thing that we always try to tell people to do is go into your task manager, whatever it might be. We use Asana here at AdBadger. And essentially, you should have a task for the first week of the new month. And it could be someone, you know, anyone on your team. But basically, they should be a reminder to download last month's data for every single of the six reports. That way, what this will do is it'll sort of build up a library underneath the report builder where you can sort of just scroll through and click, hey, what were my December 2018 sales? I just, I have that, I have my search term report right there. I click on it, I can see all the searches that were ultra valuable during Q4 uh, last year, older than 60 days, that's the key here. Yeah, and you can also just store them on your hard drive too if you want, just to make it easier so you don't have to go onto Amazon every time. You can just, you know, have a, you can break it out, have a folder separated by years and months and all that stuff. Um, the, the other part about these sponsored products when you're getting ready to download them, not only do you have to pick the time frame, but you also have to pick the data units, and that's basically um, how they're going to break down the rows of data, and you can choose either daily or total. So, for example, if you're looking at a search term report of last month and you were doing total, it would just show you all of the data for the whole month. Whereas if you used, if you hit daily, it would show you a daily search term report. So it would say, hey, May 1st, um, this was everything. May 2nd, this was everything. So it's going to be a much more extensive search term report. That's right. So let's actually jump into the meat of this episode, the six types of reports and how to get value from them. So up first, we have what I think is the king of all these reports, and that is the search term report. Uh, the search term report, I absolutely, absolutely love. I love the whole keyword dis triggering different kinds of search terms. I love being able to tap into the different search terms. And this is a perfect example of why you should be using utilizing these reports because you can't see search terms in your actual campaign manager. And just in case there's anyone out there that doesn't understand the relationship between search terms and like their actual targeting, like the actual keywords that they're using, Stephen, could you just break that down really quick, the relationship between keywords and search terms? Yeah, so actually when I was first uh, interviewing with AdBadger, uh, one of the questions on the interview thing was, uh, um, how would you explain the difference between a search term and a keyword? Yeah. So uh, I think this is the answer I gave that got me hired. So if anyone's you know looking at applying to Ad Badger, you can copy it, copy paste my answer. But I gave the analogy of Marco Polo, where I basically said, um, you know, if there's a bunch of customers out there who are searching and they're saying Marco, um, you want to respond with Polo to the right customers that you actually want to be found by them. So you don't want to be found by everybody because not everybody's going to buy your product. They could just drive up you know wasted ad spend, but if uh, the customers, what they're searching is uh, what they're actually typing into the search bar, that's them crying out Marco. And you picking the keywords that you want to bid on is you saying Polo. And if it's a match between your keyword and the customer search term, then you know Amazon will pair you guys up and uh, make sure that you get found by them. And uh, of course, you guys know this by now, I'm sure, but there's three match types, um, broad match, phrase match, and exact match. And so those search term reports will show you, you know, which keywords and which match types were actually triggering which searches from the customer. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think, uh, I think I remember this interview question. I, I think there, there's like another question on our digital interview that actually says you're managing, you're, you're overlooking someone's campaigns and you notice that they're getting a lot of conversions for the keyword running shoes. The client wants to increase bids on that broad match keyword running shoes by 300% because it's doing so well. What are your steps to determine if this is a good idea or not? Well, the, you have to go to a search term report because if this, if this is a broad match keyword running shoes, you actually have no idea what you're actually getting conversions for if you're only looking at the campaign manager 
interface. You have to go into the search term report so you can actually see all of the things that you're appearing for. And then, you know, you have to look at that and you might determine that you're getting loads of conversions for men's running shoes as opposed to actually just running shoes. So the search term report helps clue you in. But it, it fills in the gap between what you're looking at in your campaign manager, where it says broad or phrase or even auto campaigns. And then you have to go into the search term report to actually see what it is that you actually got clicks and conversions for. So this is the strategy to get the most value out of this is to use that discovery. So go in and, and take a look. And then it allows you to find all of those good, strong converters and boom, upgrade them to exact match, upgrade them to stronger bid, upgrade the specific search terms that actually got the conversions as opposed to just looking at your auto campaign performance or just looking at your broad and phrase performance. Yeah. And one final thing on search term reports before we go on to the next one. Um, it's a really good way to kind of find, you know, which search terms aren't converting and should be turned into mm -hmm. negative keywords. And the real easy way to do that is um, I'll just sort all of the searches in from highest spend to lowest spend. Um, and then I'll look at ones that have not actually of those that didn't get any conversions. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes there are ones that only get clicks, no conversions, only drive up spend, no sales. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just look through those. A lot of times those searches seem to be coming from, um, you know, broad match keywords actually that, that are irrelevant, just mm -hmm. like Michael was describing. So um, I would just take that list and, you know, um, copy and paste that into uh, my negative keywords list in Amazon. Yep. And I've got one thing, a, a PS on search term reports. I don't think a lot of people realize this when they're looking at a search term report, you're only seeing data for things that you got clicks for, meaning you do not see all of the data that you only got impressions for and no clicks. Meaning if you were to go and add up all of the impressions that you're seeing in your search and report, that will be a smaller number than your total impressions for your entire account. Because let's say your click through rate is only 1%, that means you're only gonna see 1% of the actual data that you're getting in your search and report. So always keep that in mind. Real quick way to manage this, and we've talked about this on our negative keyword episode, but you should be doing proactive negative research as well. So trying to trying to do your best at determining what the 99 or 98 percent of impressions that you're never going to see data for, what could have those possible, what could have those things been, and how do I help prevent that so I can gain more information back into my account, back into my search term report, and any other final thoughts on search terms? I think that covers it. Sweet. Report type number two, the targeting report. Uh, for anyone, you know, it's interesting here. I think most people download their search terms reports. Uh, I don't know if people go further than that. So just in case anyone's not downloaded a targeting report, Stephen, why don't you share a little bit about what that is? Yeah, the targeting report basically shows you um, everything that you're targeting, you know, I guess that's, you know, circular reasoning there, but it basically shows you every single keyword, every single ASIN, every single category, um, anything that you're actually bidding on, um, even in your auto campaigns, if they're, you know, newer auto campaigns, it'll show you if you're targeting loose match, close match, um, stuff like that. And it shows you all of that in a single spreadsheet, which is uh, just super powerful. Mm -hmm. So exactly, you know, it's pretty interesting, the targeting report, uh, I, it's, it's interesting because I don't know if people even realize what they're missing out on without this report. So if you're inside your campaign manager, you know, you click on a campaign, you click on an ad group, then you make your way to the targeting of that particular ad group. So you're seeing, you know, the, the 10 keywords in that one ad group at a time. But what if you wanted to view all of your keywords all at once for your entire account? That's what this report is able, allows you to do. So essentially, you're able to view every single keyword that you're bidding on. It's all also showing every product attribute target that you're bidding on. And then you can do things like sort them. You can see if you have any duplicates, if you have one keyword in one ad group and you have it somewhere else, you can see if maybe you're doing this strange thing that happens where you're, you, you have it w one place and then you add it somewhere else and then it doesn't get that many impressions. So you increase the bid on that second place. And then three weeks later, you forgot that it was in the first place. And because you've increased the bid in the second place, the first one's not getting as many impressions. So now you increase the bid over there and you keep seesawing these bids up there competing with yourself for the exact same thing you know, those are things to be aware of. And this report helps point out some of those duplicates. Uh, so I really like this report. Yeah. And, and something we talked about last week was how to perform a self audit for, or yeah, a, how to perform your own like kind of campaign audit. And um, one of the things we talked about was 
uh, we would usually sort all of our campaigns um, first by highest spend and then by highest sales and then by highest ACoS um, just to see, you know, which ones could use the most tweaking. And, you know, maybe you, you pick your top three campaigns and then you look into those and look at, you know, your highest performing ad groups, your lowest performing ad groups, and then you go into those and adjust those keywords um, accordingly. But with this, it's easy because you can see all of your keywords all at once without having to go into every single individual ad group and every single one of your campaigns. And uh, that can also, you know, bring attention to maybe some keywords that are underperforming in another campaign that like, you know, wasn't on the top three when you were, you know, doing those other sorting methods. So that keyword just got overlooked. But um, yeah, everything we said, you know, last week about how to perform those audits, you can do those with these targeting reports. You know, look at your, your best performing keywords, crank up the bids on those, look at your worst performing keywords, maybe pause, archive, or lower your bids on those. So a lot of potential there. You know, this is like a, a deep cut. And I, is, is that phrasing, does that make sense to you? If I say this is a deep cut tip, does that mean like anything? A, like a cuts deep in a good way or uh, bad way? My understanding of a deep cut is something that like only like diehards would ever recognize, but like a deep cut on like a CD, like it's not one of the singles. Oh. It's like a deep the cut. The first thing that came to mind in my head was uh, the Dixie Chicks. The first cut is the deepest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I, think I, I don't think I'm, <laughs> think I'm somewhere else. So the, the, the hidden gem of the targeting report is, as far as I know, this is the only place where you see ROAS, return on ad spend or revenue over ad spend. And this is for like PPC nerds only, but ROAS was generally considered like the king of all PPC metrics. It's like, what's your revenue over ad spend? What's your return on ad spend? When Amazon showed up, they're like, you know what? We're going to do the inverse of this. Instead of revenue over ad spend, we're going to do spend over revenue or ad costs over sales. Um, so if for anyone transitioning from Google ads over to Amazon ads, this is where ROAS lives. So if you ever wanted that metric, it's here. Uh, but of course, if you are making that transition, you probably know the formula of how to take your column for ACoS and then just invert it to get your ROAS. Uh, that's, that's the deep cut. <laughs> all right, on to the next report. So in this report, you can see all of your ASINs and SKUs that are actually being advertised, meaning they've, they've won the buy box. And uh, if they've won the buy box, they've probably gotten some impressions as well. You'll see all of these laid out by both campaign and ad group. And it's kind of like, you know, if the right hand of targeting is keywords and, you know, ASIN targets, then this would be the left hand where this is showing you everything that is actually getting those impressions, all mm -hmm. of your products there. Mm -hmm. Right. This is your product ad report. Same exact thing. You click on a campaign, you click on an ad group, you view the product ads that, you know, the ASINs that you're actually want to get clicks for, for just one ad group. But what if you wanted to see everything for your entire account. This is where this report lives. You can see all of your SKUs and your ASINs that you're advertising across the board. And again, find areas where there's duplicates. You can use this report to, to ensure that you have you know, your SKUs and your ASINs in an auto campaign, in a manual keyword targeting campaign, in maybe a manual keyword research campaign, and maybe a manual product attribute targeting campaign. So this allows you to do that check because here you know, you'll want to see the duplicates. You'll want to double check to be sure that the ASIN has maximum visibility in all of your ad types. Yeah, and it's also just a great way to um, sort of just get aggregate data on each ASIN. So if you're kind of wondering, you know, across all of my my campaigns, because, you know, if you've got a really good diversified camp, uh, account structure, that means you'll be running auto campaigns, keyword targeting campaigns, product targeting, category targeting, um, possibly even sponsored brands <clears throat> with these ASINs. So, um you can actually just look at one ASIN there and you can see, you know, in which campaign is it performing the best. You can also, you know, do subtotals for each ASIN and see, you know, out of all my campaigns, which ASINs are performing the best, which are performing the worst. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can really help you with, you know, product ad management, product selection, mm -hmm. especially, you know, say it's coming up to, um, you know, Father's Day or Valentine's Day or Christmas. And you just want to say, you know, what's like my best performing product that I could really go go hard on with mm -hmm. uh, advertising. So a really helpful tool for that. Mm -hmm. And if you ever wanted to see, so let's say you have that one product, it's in, you know, four different ad groups as, you know, it sort of should be. It's in all these different ad types. If you wanted to run a pivot table to see the total 
metrics for that. So take the numbers from my auto campaign and my manual keyword targeting and my manual ASIN targeting and my manual category targeting, all that stuff. You can then run a pivot table on all of your ASINs to see your pooled clicks for that ASIN. You can see your pooled spend and your pooled revenue for just that ASIN, uh, which is super duper valuable. So if you're unsure of what a pivot table is, Excel actually has this built in. You just be sure that you're, you have your sort of data selected and then you just go to help just type in the words pivot, and it'll say summarize the pivot table, pop up the pivot table builder. Won't get too far into it now. Fairly self-explanatory once you start playing with it, but definitely if you've never run a pivot table, pivot tables are the way to, to sort of bulk aggregate data uh, from looking at just a one big chunk of one big export of it. Yeah, I would say, you know, if this was Lord of the Rings, um, when you start using pivot tables in Excel, that's when you move from being a hobbit to a wizard. Even though I don't think, I don't know if there's such thing as Hobbit wizards, but. I'm just going to let that hang for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, I actually haven't, I don't remember Lord of the Rings that well, but I, I don't know if a Hobbit, I think they know wizards. Like Frodo knew Gandalf. Yeah, Gandalf's. I mean, that's probably a horrible analogy. My point was <laughs> uh, you become very powerful when you start using pivot tables. Boom. <laughs> Let's move on to the next report type. All righty. Report type number four, the placement report. This, fairly straightforward, shows you the placement performance data for every campaign. And of course, if you don't know what placement performance means, it means your, how you're performing on first page, top of search, rest of search, and product pages. So you'll actually be able to see the differences in the data. And again, you can sense a trend here. You could go from campaign to campaign and view the placement performance for each area or you can download a report and see everything all at once. Yeah, and once again, just a couple of weeks ago, we did a whole podcast on you know um, performance by ad placement and how to make sure you're optimizing you know whether your ad is in any of those three spots you know in the first two results on the first page, um, if it's showing up anywhere else in the rest of search or product pages. So definitely go back and listen to that podcast if you haven't already. But um, downloading this placement report just helps you optimize everything because you know the goal of a perfectly optimized account is to make sure you're hitting your target ACOS at every single possible level, at the keyword level, at the ad group level, and even at the ad placement level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this again, it's just a fast way to view all of your campaign data so that you can manipulate it in Excel, move faster, uh, do a bulk operation like in your Excel file, do the calculation for what your bid modifiers should be for rest of search, top of, uh, I'm sorry, for first page, product pages, can't do a bid modifier for rest of search, but it will help you do all those calculations here. And I highly recommend doing it that way, especially if you have more than five, 10 campaigns. Yeah, and that's actually a, a good point there, Michael. Um, you can use these for bulk operations if you're, you know, if you're, you know, more advanced and you've been using that stuff, or if you're, you know, working at an agency, and then I'm sure you're using it all the time. Um, with these, with all of these reports, you can't download these, make changes, and upload them as if it was a bulk operations, you know, file. Um, you do need to use Amazon's template. But it's actually really easy to just copy and paste the information um, from these reports over to the template and upload them. So that's that's the way you use it. Mm -hmm. um, placement optimization, you know, we won't get too far into it now. I believe uh, it was episode 30. We'll put it in the show notes so that if you want to hear more about placement optimization, you can get it there. Should we move to the next one? Let's do it. All righty. Report type number five for sponsored products, Excel reports, is the purchased product report. And, you know, at first glance, this might sound very similar to the advertised product report, but there's some slight differences here that are worth mentioning. Yeah. So one thing that's just kind of important to note is that in this report, you can only see keywords and you can't actually see search terms. And um, so that can kind of be a little bit of a problem because if you're, it's showing you all of the products that were actually purchased um, and it's showing you which keyword was attributed to that purchase for that product. Um, but if it's a broad match keyword, um, that could be any, you know, you know, any number of different search terms and running actually, shoes versus trail running shoes. Right. So you don't really know, you know, what, what search should I, you know, maybe be targeting as an exact match or anything like that. And in fact, uh, Michael, is it correct that in every single report in Amazon, you can never see correlation between ASINs and search terms? Right. You'll never see them paired up together perfectly. So to, to clarify that, basically, if you go into a search term report for an ad group with only one advertised product in it, so there's only one product in there, you can go and look at the search term report 
and know that all of those search terms are related specifically to that one ASIN in that ad group. But as soon as you incorporate two ASINs in that one ad group, you will not be able to differentiate between the search terms that triggered and, and got clicks for the first ASIN in your ad group versus the second ASIN in your ad group. So in terms of the advertised product and the uh, purchased product report, it's probably one of the most frustrating parts of Amazon advertising that the only way to view search term uh, and, well, actually you can't view it, but the only way to pair up manually because you have to go into your search term report and then see what was the ASIN in that, if you have more than one ASIN, you're not going to be able to see that data paired up, which can cause some problems sometimes if you want to know what variant and what search term should be paired up together, you're going to have to segment those out into single product ad groups if you really want that data. Yeah. And so we'll maybe create a sep uh, separate episode sometime just talking all about um, SPAGs, as you would call it, single product ad groups, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of the pros and cons of that strategy. That's right. Uh, any other thoughts on the purchase product? You know, it really just shows you, hey, somebody clicked on this and ended up purchasing this other product. Fairly straightforward there. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Are we ready for the final and, I don't know, perhaps the, the worst <laughs> product or advertising and, report and possible? And with the bang. Let's do it. Performance over time. Yes, the sixth and now, least favorite report. This report could be, it could be one of the most, you know, powerful, important reports um, because it can basically... Um, you can download a daily performance for your entire mm -hmm. account for the last 60 days, which could be incredibly powerful mm -hmm. if you're testing out a day parting strategy, which would basically mean, you know, you're, you know, increasing your bids on Wednesdays cause you get more conversions, but decreasing bids over the weekends when mm -hmm. there's less conversions and higher a costs, mm -hmm. you know, so if you could see that information for your account day by day, mm -hmm. that would be powerful. Be so, a really quick pivot table. Yeah, man, that you, you could, you could win, but, uh, you know, if you're downloading this performance report for your account, you know, I, you, I ask you listeners, like, what would you expect to see here? Like for sure, ACOS, right? Your day by day ACOS, you would definitely want to see sales because you want to say which days got the most sales, mm -hmm. which got the least, probably would want to see click through rates, conversion rates, but they actually only show you three metrics on this report. What are mm -hmm. they, Michael? Clicks, CPCs, and total spend which is just the multipl multiplication of clicks and CPC. So technically, technically it's only two metrics. Yeah, I mean, if, if they just gave us clicks and, and total spend, you know, I could just divide, you know, my total spend by my clicks to figure out my cost per mm -hmm. click. Uh, but they don't even, they don't give you sales. Like if they just gave me sales, mm -hmm. I could at least, you know, divide sales by, or sorry, um, ad cost by sales and figure out my A cost. I could figure out my revenue per click and right. make bid calculations off of that. Let me really break this down. Let's say it's the first day of a new month. You sit down at your computer and you're like, oh, it'd be really nice to know my clicks, my spend, my CPCs, my ACOS, my sales per day on my ad campaigns, the totality of them, that would be really terrific to do. So one thing you might think that you can do is download the performance over time and it would display everything. And then you can create your own charts in Excel, seeing that over time. And then you can combine multiple months worth of performance over time reports, and then see all this beautiful data. One graph to sort of really just highlight your entire years up and down and seeing every metric that you want on it. However, the only place to really get that data is in the actual campaign manager itself, which is bonkers because that's pretty darn clunky. If you want to like change a metric, you can only view two metrics at a time. If you want to like get rid of one, you have to click this X and then you have to find it in some drop down. You can't even search for it. Uh, so many weird things of why you can't just see the data over time for the metrics that you want. You can use the Amazon campaign manager interface, but even if you like refresh it, it like resets to a default sometimes. So there's just so many weird things. I don't know why you can't get performance over time super duper easily. Yeah. I mean, this, so like we said, like this could be, it has the potential to be the, the most powerful report, but instead, you know, the way it stands right now, we're, you know, basically, you know, it's basically just showing you how much you spent on each day and that's it. So that, that means nothing to me. If I spent a lot on one day mm -hmm. and a little on one day. Why don't they call this spend over time? They, they should, <laughs> because if I spent a lot, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if it was profitable ad spending, right. that's a great thing, you know? That's right. So, And anyway, these are the six types of reports that you can get 
inside your Amazon advertising reports for sponsored products. Um, some are definitely more useful than others. The search term report, obviously t super terrific, targeting and advertised products. Uh, so it allows you to aggregate some data that you'd have to go campaign by campaign in order to get. The placement report, again, does kind of the same thing. You, you could get all this data in the campaign manager, but you'd have to like click from campaign to campaign. So I think those are my four favorite. Purchase product can sometimes be a little helpful, maybe if you have loads of people clicking on product A, but then end up buying product B. Um, that might come down to a you know, back of house business decision, performance over time, obviously pretty useless. Um, and you know, this show is definitely not an advertisement for Ad Badger, the software. We always wanna be very clear and cognizant of that. But um, if you're interested in hearing more about how Ad Badger has sort of tried to handle some of these reporting issues like adding up data over a long period of time. You know, these are things that we're trying to incorporate into Ad Badger. So if anyone has any questions about that, you know, feel free to head over to our site, uh, adbadger.com slash podcast deal, where you can hear some more of that. We have a little chat bubble in the bottom right. If you ever want to talk to me and Steven, we'll be the ones answering those questions. Um, other than that, any final thoughts on these reports? Uh, I guess I would just say, you know, don't be intimidated by big Excel sheets. Mm -hmm. um, keep practicing, and in no time, you guys are going to become Excel wizards. Yes, that is it. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. Feel free to check out all of our episodes at adbadger.com slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Take care. Here in the PPC Den. Mm -hmm.